Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for LowPost.com and I'm back again with part two of our Fusion Fundamentals course. And in this lesson, I want to get in and talk about adding more than one clip or more than one element to our composites. In our first lesson, we talked about taking a clip from our Resolve timeline and round tripping it into Fusion and then back to our timeline. However, as we know, a composite is made up of more than just one shot. So in this lesson, I want to talk about how we're not only going to get in and add more shots to our composite, but I want to get in and I want to talk about a very common situation that you can run into when working with media larger than the raster size of your timeline. Now, before we get rolling, I do want to remind you that we love your feedback. We want to know what you think of this course. Plus, we also want to know what questions you might have as well as what you want to see in future courses. You can head on over and post all of that in the forums at lowpost.com slash forums. All right, that's enough of an introduction for now. Let's just get into Fusion and let's get started. All right, so let's Command or Alt and tab into DaVinci Resolve. Now, one thing I want to try to do at the start of each lesson is give you a little tidbit of information. It doesn't necessarily need to be something that's related to the course that we're talking about, but just another great little piece of information, something that you might find comes in handy down the line. So in this lesson, our quick tip is going to be about node color. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let's just use the clip that I'm parked on here as our example. Now, we know to get this clip into Fusion, quite straightforward. We're simply going to navigate over to the Fusion module. And once I do, here are our two nodes representing our media in and our media out. Now let's just do what we did in the previous lesson and let's add a blur node in between these two nodes. So with our media in one node selected, I'm simply gonna add a blur node in between the two of them. Now I want you to take a look at what's going on with these nodes. Now you'll notice that the media in one and the media out one nodes are colored as blue and the blur node is colored as orange. So that's something very interesting. Now why is this interesting and why should you care about this? Well, right now we're dealing with three nodes. And I mean, in reality, we're really dealing with one node, which is the blur node, because the media in and the media out, I'll consider them to be one object. But think about this, what's gonna happen once you have 50 nodes inside of one composite? And what you need to do is quickly get in and find all the blur nodes or all the transform nodes or you know another specific type of node. You'll easily be able to track down what's what by just looking at the color of them. Okay, so that does beg the question, what do the other colors represent? Well, just for kicks, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna move these out of the way here. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit on the window and I'm just gonna start adding some other nodes. I'm gonna deselect all the nodes that were here. I'm gonna add a transform node. Let's add a title node. There we go, perfect. Now it's added its own merge node. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna leave that as well because that's got the gray color associated with it. What we're gonna do is just add a 3D node in here as well, perfect. And let's take our media and let's add a mask to it just so that you can see all of the different colors going on with the nodes. We have browns, we have olive colors, we have grays, you know, we have oranges. So let's just talk briefly about what all these colors represent. And you know what we're gonna do as well? We're just gonna put up a super that's gonna tell you all the different node colors as I run through them. Now, blue represents a clip node that you've brought in, whether it's from inside of Fusion or you've brought from your timeline. It can also represent a media out node. Orange represents a generator. What's a generator? Text is a generator. A background node is a generator. Orange nodes you'll see are blur nodes. Olive are color adjustment nodes. Pink, paint nodes. Dark orange, tracking nodes. Tan are transform nodes. Teal are VR nodes. Dark brown are warp nodes. And gray can be a few different things. You'll notice that when I added that merge node, that was gray. Now, purple, particle system nodes. Dark blue, 3D nodes. And last but certainly not least, brown are mask nodes. So this was sort of the little quick tip I wanted to give you off the top to start looking for these different colored nodes so you can start identifying things as you're working through inside of Fusion. All right, now of course you'll remember from the last lesson, I'm simply gonna head back to the edit module. I'm gonna right click on our clip and I'm going to reset that Fusion composition so it's exactly the way that it was when we started this lesson. So in our last lesson, we talked about getting a single clip from our timeline into Fusion. 
In this lesson, I want to talk about now bringing in multiple clips because to be honest, if you're only going to be adding an effect to a single clip, chances are you'll just be doing it through the edit module, not necessarily taking it to Fusion. Fusion is a compositor and that's what you're going to want to be doing, compositing. So how are we going to bring multiple clips into Fusion? Well, there's a couple ways that we can do it and it really depends on you and what your workflow is and also what's going on in your timeline. Now you'll see that I've taken a few of our Nike clips and I've stacked them up basically five high. Now this is a common situation. You've come in, you know that these five clips are the clips that you'd like to send into Fusion. So how do we go about doing this? Well, if you're coming from a Premiere background, this workflow will be fairly familiar to you. What we're gonna do is we're simply gonna select all the clips. I'm gonna right click on them don't worry about the fact that the context menu is actually outside of the screen because the command that we want is located right up near the top and we're going to make a new fusion clip. Now as soon as we do that nothing has apparently happened but you're going to notice something. If you take a look in the lower right hand corner of the clip you'll notice those three little stars that represent the three little stars of the fusion module that you can see right down there. So what's gonna happen with this clip once we are parked over it and I head into Fusion, you'll see that what has happened is is that Fusion has opened up that Fusion clip, it's taken all the clips that I had contained in it, and it's now added it to my new Fusion project. It's also connected them all together using merge nodes. Now, I actually don't need any of these merge nodes right now for the purpose of what we're doing. And what I do want to do though, before we get rolling, is I do want to get in and just name these clips very quickly. We're just going to call this man running. Now you'll remember from our first lesson, if I'd like to call this clip up on the left monitor, I can simply press one on the keyboard and we'll call this clip by hitting F2 woman running. And we'll come to the next one. Let's just hit one on the keyboard. We'll just call this, this is again another man running. We'll just call this man running left. So let's go F2, man running left. And we've only got a couple more here. We'll hit F1 on this one. This is, let's see what this is here. We'll just come back. That's a woman looking around. Perfect, okay, F2, woman looking around. And last but certainly not least, we have, perfect. That looks like a Woman lifting weights. All right, so we now have our clips named. But that does, of course, beg the question, how do I know where any of these clips are placed? And if I need to get in and make an adjustment to any of them, how do I do it? Do I need to head back to the edit module, but then I have this fusion clip here, so do I have to try to go to the media pool to find? You don't have to do any of that. Okay, I'm gonna head back to the Fusion module and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, believe it or not, open up the keyframes window. Now, as soon as I open up the keyframes window, you're gonna notice that what I have in here is a visual representation of all of the nodes. And I think what I'm gonna do to make my life a little bit easier here is I'm just gonna drag the media out one node a little bit closer to the other nodes so that when I open the keyframe window, we can see everything perfect. Now, you'll notice that the media out one node is red. I wonder what's going on with that. Well, don't worry, we'll get to that in just a second. But what you can now see is where each one of these other clips falls in relationship to each other. Okay, now you'll see that the longest clip is actually the man running and it's not quite the entire length. It's not quite the entire 97 frames because the man running to the left actually starts at that first frame and goes to frame 84. Now, let's head back to this media out one node for just a second to figure out why it's red. Well, the reason it's red is that Fusion's telling me that it's actually not going anywhere. Nothing's happening with it. If I was to take any one of these nodes and connect it to the media out node, you'll immediately notice that it jumps to the bottom of the screen and it's now, for the most part, filled in. Not completely, but for the most part. Why for the most part? Because I took the man running node and I connected it and you'll see that it actually starts two frames in. So that's why the first two frames are grayed out or redded out in our case, okay? Now, to be honest, I don't really care whether I have this node connected or not. I'm just gonna disconnect it for right now because I wanna show you that what we also have the ability to do is to move things around right here inside of the keyframes window. So for example, let's take the woman running clip, okay? I'm just gonna take that, I'm just gonna call it up here on the left viewer. 
And what I have the ability to do as I drag through, you'll notice that as I drag through, I'll just grab the time bar. Okay, you'll see that there she is running. And as soon as we get to the frame, first frame, frame 13, she's going to disappear. Well, if I wanted her to start a little bit later, what I could do is simply grab the left side of that edit and just trim it a little bit. You'll see there she disappears. Now, what I also have the ability to do is to shift where it actually is going to fall inside of the, we'll call it the media out one container. Okay, I can actually grab it and drag it down like such. Now you'll notice that the clip kind of freaks out a little bit. Now I've sort of noticed this. I'm not really sure why it does it because I'm going to show you another technique of doing this where it actually works flawlessly. Okay, now for me, I'm not really one that's big on setting things up inside of my resolve timeline the way that I did. Normally what I like to do is get that first clip set up and then I like to bring my other clips in through Fusion. So let's go through that technique. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to head back to the edit module. I'm just going to undo what I just did to get everything back like such. I'm just going to select all of these layers and I'm just going to delete them. So let's now use our tried and true method of just parking over top of the clip. I'm going to head to the fusion module and what we should simply have is two nodes. That's the way I like it. So let's now get in. Let's add some other media to our composite. How we're going to do that. We're going to head up to the media pool. Once the media pool is open, we can select a clip or multiple clips and take them and drag them down into the node window. And once we do, those three clips will now appear much like they did when we created that new fusion clip with the merge nodes attached. I'm just going to delete those. But more importantly, what's going to happen is that when we head back to that keyframe window, let's actually just again take everything, just organize it just a little bit better here. We'll just move it over here to the left. Very nice. I'm going to come up to that keyframe window and you'll now see that much like what we had before, we can now get in and adjust the in and out points of each one of these shots. But more so you'll notice how much more responsive Resolve is when dealing with these clips outside of a merge down fusion clip. They are much easier to work with, much more responsive. And to be honest, this is really why I like working with the clips this way as opposed to bringing them in from my Resolve timeline. Okay, I'm just basically just, again, trimming everything the way that we like. And at any time we can come in, choose any one of these nodes. Let's just pick, in this case, I'm going to go with the shortest node. Let's just go with our Media In 4. I'm just going to call it up on the left display here. Let's just bring the window over here. We'll just close the media pool. Now remember, we're not seeing it because it's ended right here. So now if I drag back, it will immediately appear over there on the left viewer and then disappear once the clip is done. Now, with all that being said, there is one other technique that I want to show you similar to what we did that accomplishes the same thing, just in a slightly different way. And what we're going to do is we're going to use media two as our example. Now, once I select it over here in the keyframe window, you'll notice that it's immediately selected over here in the nodes window. Now, I have the inspector open and the inspector is important for what I'm going to show you. You'll notice that in the inspector, when we have the clip selected, if we head on over here and take a look down towards the bottom, you'll see that we have a parameter called trim. And right now the in value is set to 60, the out value is set to 116 and the number 57 is in the middle. Well, what this represents is that the shot starts at frame 60, goes to frame 116, and is 57 frames long. Now, if we take a look up towards the top of the inspector, you'll see that we have something called global in out, 42, 98, and there's that 57 number again. What this represents is that in the entire global positioning of this clip, it comes in at the media out node at frame 42 and goes out at frame 98. So for example, if I wanted to get in and adjust the in and out points of this clip, what I could do if I want to adjust them uniformly, meaning keep the shot the same length, but just have different in and out points, I can actually grab in the middle of that bar and start dragging like such. Now what's important to keep in mind is that I actually don't have media two up on our viewer. So let's call it up here, perfect. And now I'm just going to adjust the shot and you'll see that as I adjust it, it will dynamically show it to me up in the left viewer. Now, you're not going to notice a change down here in the keyframe window when we're adjusting the in and out points of our shot. The only time you're going to notice a change being made in the keyframe window is when you head on up to the global in out and adjust its position from within the container 
from our resolve edit timeline. So keep that in mind. All right, our lesson's done, but the discussion is only just getting started. If you like this lesson, if you have any comments about it, or if you have something that you want to see, don't forget that we want to hear from you by heading on over to our forums at lowpost.com slash forums. And if you'd like to send me a message directly, you can always send it to kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. <laughs>